You are making good progress, Wolfie. The challenge today will be the most difficult you have faced so far. Good luck. Hi everyone! You may be wondering why you are seeing me much earlier than usual, and well, Wolfie did an oopsie. In his haste to get his recording done, he may or may not have forgotten to actually press the record button on his phone when performing the opening for this week. Then, once all the cards were actually opened, he pressed the stop button only to realize it just started recording and, well, here we are. Instead, Wolfie decided to just take a photo of all of the relevant cards he opened this week, which you'll see on screen now. As you can see, we opened seven packs of Maze of Millennia this week and actually hit the jackpot. Not only did we manage to pick up one of the missing pieces for our Earthbound core, which is Geo Grasha, but we got ourselves an additional Line Walker, even if we most likely won't play it. We also got a rank eight we can play in number one, Infection Buzzking, and the cream of the crop itself. Bonfire. Bonfire is completely unplayable for our deck, but it's a nice cashback for Wolfie's poor wallet. For the last of the opening, we got ourselves two packs of the 25th Rarity Collection, rounding out our total to 15 bucks. While most of the cards in this opening aren't as relevant, picking up an Entis, Lava Golem, and two Effect Veilers is not really that bad of a pull. Wolfie even managed to secure a copy of me. Now if only he found a way to actually play it. With that in mind, this was the deck for this week. While most of it remains the same, the effect veilers have been added in place of Forbidden Droplet, which have made their way into the side deck. We've also removed some of the unplayable synchro monsters in the extra deck, to make way for Geo Grasha as well as Infection Buzzking. The deck is still in a very bricky state, but as we saw last episode, it has ways of making two negates, as well as recovering for future turns. The only thing we can hope is that the community in the Lupine Weekly aren't too crazy, but only one way to find out. This week was a four-round locals, with a mix of returning faces and completely new players, which was awesome. The community seems to be on a sealed-only craze as well, as a lot of players are currently going through their own journey. If you too would like a locals experience like no other, do check out the Discord. Link in the description. We play every Saturday at 7 p.m. Sest. Anyways, the show must go on. Let's cut to Wolfie to give you the scoop on how this week went down. All right, everybody. We are officially in the Lupine Weekly in round one up against Lardax, who is playing Eldlich, of all things. Our starting hand is not exactly great. We go for a Dark World Dealing, so we draw ourselves into a, a, a freaking field spell. We do pitch the accession to the graveyard here, and we attempt to just draw an additional card, but the only card we manage to find is Cerule, so we're just going to have to set a card and pass our turn. Lardax manages to banish a uh, Eldixir into a Hawkero on his turn, and he is playing Eldritch with Lord of the Heavenly Prison! This card is absolutely insane against us, and it kind of sucks. He goes for a duality, finding two pots and a judgment. He decides to go for the pot of extravagance this time around. He then sets four passes turn. We do draw into Rainbow, which would have been the funniest thing in the universe here, so I just decide- I just say, hey, you know what, I'm gonna activate a funny effect. I'm gonna go for Rainbow's second effect, I'm gonna blow up your entire back row, which just doesn't do anything. It's kind of unfortunate. We get Torrential here, which doesn't end up doing too much, because we draw into a Snow, so we can actually draw ourselves into the Accession. The Snow gets striked, which is unfortunate, but at this point, we manage to go into Calorless. Calorless blows up the entire board and punches for 53! Unfortunately, it is not quite a kill. We needed one more uh, one more guy here, essentially, to really be able to kill him off the bat. But it is what it is. He sets a bunch of cards off of his Hikaro. He gets himself into the Eld Lich here and then just goes off. Kunkaro is going to kill the Kalorless. We can't really do anything about it. He goes for the Pawn of Extravagance, drawing himself two additional cards. Gets another Lord of the Heavenly Prison, even though he doesn't have any back row until he sets two. We get punched in the face by an Eld Lich, which is unsurprising. We draw ourselves into a level 1 Earthbound. 
Summoning this isn't really going to be able to do anything, so we're going to pinch it in order to get ourselves a brow. We're going to send the brow off of the effect of this and just not get anything, unfortunately. It's not even worth setting it because we don't have a card we can summon off of it. He activates Lord of the Heavenly Present again with three cards set in the back, one of them being Pot of Duality. He finds himself a Lord, another Pot of Extravagance, and another Pot of Duality. It's almost the exact same pull, actually. He is still unable to kill us here, so he just punches us for 25 with the Eldritch again, passes back to us, and maybe we can draw a card that does something now? A Mothman! Mothman can do stuff. We do activate the Mothman, which pitches the Vision Resonator, which will activate the Vision, Res Vision Resonator to search Crimson Gaia. Crimson Gaia will activate here, and we'll use Crimson Gaia to bring back the Vision Resonator, as the level 3 wouldn't do us anything in this situation. We're gonna banish one to send the so. Snow is going to search the Grapha, and now we're finally off to the races. We're going to go for the Accession, finally, bring out the Big Grapha, activate uh, Grapha to pop a back row, which is not gonna happen due to Lord of the Heavenly Prison, but we don't really want to pop his Eldritch or his Trap to let him search anything else, so we're just gonna pass turn. At this point, he is going to activate Lord of the Heavenly Prison once again, and he is going to attempt to go for the Eldritch effect, which we are going to immediately negate to discard a card. He's going to go for the Hakeru to defend himself and pass back to us. With the negate now up on the board, we should be good here. We'll go for the Accession, we'll pitch the Rainbow. Rainbow's going to search the Silva, just in case he decides any funny business, we can make him discard his entire hand, and he scoops up game number one. Replays in Omega and so fast by comparison, man. It's hard to keep up, but hey, I'm doing what I can. For game number two, we have probably named this one Goodbye Grapha because you're about to see the funniest shit of all time. Pot of Extravagance is going to be activated, allowing him to draw two cards. He's going to go for Evil Eye Domain, which apparently he cited into game number two to search Surzeal. He is playing Evil Eye without the spell, though. He just uses it to search Evil Eye Retribution, which is just a straight-up Omni Negate. He sets himself five cards once again and passes back to us, and we do have the Hand Destruction, which we're going to have to activate, which, of course, he's going to Mega Negate. We do go for the Dark World Puppetry here in order to just banish three cards and send the Snow in order to get a Session. This is probably the best thing we can do. We'll go for the Accession heal. We're banishing, uh, or rather sending both Rainbow and Argrapha, and unfortunately... He is going to strike and use all of our effects at the same time here. So we get struck and then hit by Ice Dragon's Prison, which is going to end up banishing one of the Graphas. Or sorry, he doesn't even banish a Graffa, he just steals it. At this point, though, we do manage to set up a little bit. We go ahead and we search for a Genta. Genta is going to be able to start popping off. We activate the Gates of the Dark World, we banish it, we send another Graffa, we attempt to pump the Graffa, which is now dead. Hooray! We get back into the rainbow, we do a little resource loop as best as we can to just try and recover as many resources as possible for the following turn. We set the accession and we pass back, and now begins the funny business. We activate a session to which he changed the second Ice Dragon's Prison, banishing both of our Graffas, leaving us unable to fuse into Big Graffa, and if only we didn't have Puppetry. Puppetry is the one card here that allows us to pick a Graffa back up from the graveyard so we can pitch another Graffa and destroy a Super Poly in the back row. Then he hits us with the fucking third Ice Dragon's Prison! He stole a Graffa three times! At this point, my pure inbred anger pops off, and we just decide to go into Big Rainbow, punch him in the face for 300, set the card, get Graffa back on the board, and pass turn. We have five cards in hand, he only has one, we should be set to go here. He gets a Pot of Duality for a Solemn Strike, a Solemn Judgment, and a Conquistador, where he decides to add Conquistador to hand. At this point, of course, it is not going to matter all that much. He is just going to set the Conquistador pass back to us. We have six cards in our hand with a session in the graveyard. We are absolutely killing him this turn. But the fact he managed to not only steal Graffa once, he stole Graffa three times and banished both of them. It turns out Puppetry is actually a very useful card in case our cards do end up getting banished, so maybe we have to side into that more often. Regardless, though, we do manage to win the first round of the loop line with 2-0 as we proceed to the second. For the second round of the Lupine Weekly this week, we're playing up against Mothman, old-time favorite of the show, usually on Zombies, but not today. We attempt to activate our funny draw card, which gets Ash Blossom, so we'll go ahead and Mothman, unfortunately pitching Silva. We'll then go ahead and we'll Thunderbird, which does get Get of the Rainbow, Rainbow searching us a Graffa, as well as another draw one funny card. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our Silva back to our hand, we're gonna go for the draw card, which is gonna give us Crimson Gaia, which is actually kind of useful. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna summon the Silva back, and for the first time ever, we're gonna make Infection. Buzz King. When summoned, we get to look at our opponent's extra deck and send one card in there to the graveyard, and we decide to send the Zeus, because the Zeus is scary, because he's on Sprite. We do get ourselves the Crimson Gaia to get our uh, Soul Resonator in order to get into Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend, going into our funny Negate card, and I can't believe we actually got to summon a Negate on this board. That is hilarious. We pass up to our opponent, now with our hand going. We get Impermanence, which obviously we are just going to Negate, and then we get TTT'd in order for him to draw two. He gets a Sprite Red, and we flip the Skill Drain. He does have a Pixies in hand, though, which basically honests out our big guy, so we only get Scarlet onto the board. He goes into Colossus, goes for a Sprite Starter to go into Carrot, 
He goes for the blue in hand, goes into Ninja Shadow Mosquito, which isn't gonna do him anything because of skill drain and persistent effects. Buzz King activated for the shenanigans. We go for the Crimson Gaia to search a Vision Resonator, now having both Resonator in our hand. We're gonna go for the Vision Resonator. We're gonna make Grimlina, and we're just going to punch. Mosquito is going to die because it is negated and can be destroyed by battle, and Mothman actually scoops up and Sprite against our very funny skill drain board. I can't believe we managed to get away with that one. And so we proceed to game number two, and our starting hand is looking completely okay. It's unfortunate that Rainbow's there, but it is what it is. He just sets one and passes, meaning his hand is probably super bricked up. We decide to activate the funny, funny discard our entire hand card, which he allows us to do. He discards an Ash for that, which is funny. We do get our Crimson Gaia back into our hand. We have it evenly matched as well. We decide to destroy the uh, face down card. We activate Crimson Gaia and we search Soul Resonator. We'll go for the Soul Resonator in order to search a Snow here because we are going to have to start our combo somehow, and this is a way of doing it. This is why I like playing Soul Resonator. It actually does do things in this deck. It's kind of hilarious. We banish the Grapha after searching the field spell, then we send the Snow. Snow searches as a session for a Fusion Summon on our opponent's turn. We're then going to return to get Grapha back onto the board, and we're going to do the loop once more, hoping to get a little bit further onto the board if we possibly can. We do have another Snow in our hand, so it is as good as we can get. We're going to get the Silva from here. If we had a way of discarding that, we could actually make a negate. Oh, hey, look! We have a way of discarding it. We go for the draw spell, discarding the graph up, summoning the Silva, making ourselves discard, and we get hit with an Nibiru, which is just unfortunate. What he doesn't know, though, is that this will still summon the Red Dragon Archfiend, so we can destroy the Nibiru on the opposing side of the board, activating Crimson Gaia, which summons back the Scarred Red Dragon Archfiend, and if we weren't locked into Dark Dragons here, we could have made an Insector, but it doesn't matter, because we still get our Negate onto the board. This deck is doing things! I can't fucking believe that this deck is actually doing things. He goes for the starter, which we decide to negate. He goes for the Pixies, where we activate the Accession. He's gonna hit us with Called by the Grave, which is super unfortunate, but we can still make Colorless. Colorless blows up the board, and he is forced to scoop. Holy shit, we just beat Sprite. <laughs> Given his starting hand must have been absolutely terrible for him to only set one in Sprite, which is unfortunate. But you know what? The deck is actually putting up a fight. Let's be honest here. We got through a Nibiru, we got through hand traps, and we still managed to make a negate and interaction on our opponent's turn. This deck is doing stuff. I don't think anyone can, like, say anything against it. This is going great. We're not two and zero. Let's go. Right, for game, or rather round number three, blink it and you miss it. We're going up against DC Insane Joker, who is playing one of the coolest decks I've seen in a long time, who is playing Horus Orchest. Unfortunately for us, we completely whiff on sending anything to the graveyard that would have been useful to us, where every single target except Silva would have gotten us started, and Joker is just off to the races and he's going to do Horus things. At the moment, we just don't have an out for Horus whatsoever, and, and as you can see, he is just gonna pop off with literally everything in the known universe. We don't stand a chance against this one. He sends the Harp Horror, he gets the Nightmare, he's doing full Orcus combo shenanigans. We are just getting absolutely eviscerated. <laughs> As you can guess, we are going to scoop this one up very quickly, realizing that, hey, if we would have discarded any of the cards in our hand that would have done anything, we might have been able to stop this, but unfortunately, we missed the dice roll. Things like this happen. So we go to game number two, and our starting hand is... even worse. Uh, welcome to Dark World Bricks, ladies and gentlemen. We set a card and we pray to God to the Heat Bricks, because Orcus can do that. He opened King Sarcophagus again. Yeah, no, we just realize immediately that if he has access to King Sarcophagus, there is nothing we are going to be able to do to stop him. He will just pound out a bunch of level eights with high attack, and at that point, we're just dead. So I just decide to scoop him up. There's not much we can do, and we will be taking damage for losing this ranked game 0-2, but we are 2-1 and one at the moment, which is still a chance at top 4. So we go into the last round of today, which is against Bosque. Bosque always has the funny decks, and the fact that he's here is kind of scary. He goes for the Trap Tricks, which is apparently his sealed only Earth shenanigans. And as we know, Trap Trick is an incredibly hard matchup for us, because we keep losing to it every time. Luckily for us, though, he gets both Holoteas here, so he doesn't really get to search or do a bunch of shenanigans. He goes into Rafflesia with a Gravedigger's Holotea set. We can probably beat through this. We're gonna go for the Field Spell. He's gonna activate Artifact Sanctum to summon Moral Tack, which is the first First time I've seen Moral Tack in literally forever, but yeah, that gets rid of our field spell. We do get to draw a card here, so we are going to pitch the Brow to attempt to draw a card, which he allows us to do, which is great. We're gonna go for this, he's gonna hit us once again, and we are just gonna have to summon our uh, little guy here, which gets negated by a Floodgate Trap Hole. So we decide to summon the Line Walker, 
And we're still kind of able to do stuff here. He sets a terrifying trap hole nightmare and just keeps looping resources like he always does, and we get harmonic synchrofusion, which unfortunately we can't really use at the moment, but it's still there. We do manage to pitch the snow, which is the perfect drop here, so we can get a session to our hand. We really, really need that accession to go off, and it does. He goes for another Holotea to summon it. We get Big Ref onto the board. We're gonna attempt to pop the Reflesia, because we kind of can, and Reflesia bites the dust. We do get another Genta off of this, meaning we can do the loop once more to attempt to go for the kill, depending on what we can draw here. We draw into the rainbow, which is unfortunate, so we just decide to get the second rainbow in order to pick up our accession by pitching the rainbow to get Silva. At this point, we can now choose to either blow up the entire board or make him hand loop for two when we negate something, which is the best we can do. We're then just going to go to battle, we're going to punch over literally every trap text card in the known universe, and we're going to leave Moral Tack up, because I'm not that scared of Moral Tack. We pass the turn over to Vasque, he's gonna draw a card, and he's gonna draw into Ice Hand, which I find hilarious. At this point, we're actually gonna fuse into Geokraken to stop him from going into Sarah. He goes for Nightmare, we discard it, we get the Rainbow. Rainbow is going to blow up all of our mon- or all the opponent's monsters. He pops our back row, which is fine, and summons Fire Hand. He then gets Halatea in order to go into a Utopia, of all things, which I find to be absolutely awesome. He sets the Grave Dragon's Travel once again, goes into Utopia, we activate the Geokraken, it blows up, and he passes turn back to us and realizes that we have beaten him with our entire board of absolute dinguses. He does not go down without a fight, though. He goes back into Dianea, but we're gonna negate the Dianea effect. He's gonna hit us with a Grave Digger's Trap Hole, which, fair enough. We are just gonna punch over the guy and punch him to death as we take game one of round four. Oh, man, we're actually putting up a fight today. Round four, game two. We're once again forced to going second up against Trap Trick, which is very, very scary, but our hand is looking completely okay. He goes for Trap Tantalizing Tune to search... Huh. Wait, why does he have that? Why does he have a Tarolaman in there? Basuke, why are you cooking this stuff up? He goes with a Kashira Ogre to get prep. Yeah, Kashira prep. What? What's happening? What is this deck? What? I mean, it's. I know it's sealed only, but this is hilarious. He misses the Sheeran Mill, luckily, and only sets two with no trap tricks, which is absolutely awesome. We go for the dealings. We pitch the brow to get an extra card draw, which we do, and we draw into a session. At this point, he gets to look at the top five, and he can banish a card, but he just doesn't. I, I'm pretty sure he just misclicked and chose not to banish one, but it probably wouldn't have mattered. We do draw a card, we page the rainbow, we get ourselves a field spell off the top since we knew it was there now. We search the big boy. We then activate the field spell, we go for some field spell shenanigans, and he activates heartbeat to send the field spell back to our deck, which is ass. Thunderbird pitches the uh, accession, which pitches the grapple, so we can pick it back up. We then manage to go into a big Bazinga Boy, and we kill off our Thunderbird here for reasons I don't remember, but I had a plan in mind, I just forgot what it was. At this point, we have a negate that blows up the board, though, so regardless of what he does, we are essentially set. We draw into the snow, which we can activate using the accession. Just pitch the snow and we can search anything we want. We're going to search Puppetry, just in case he goes off. The only reason we search Puppetry is so we can banish cards from the graveyard in case he attempts to bring them back, which is one of the best things we can do. He draws himself another card, which is an Ash Blossom, and he realizes very quickly that he's not winning this one, and we are just going to go into battle and end this man's whole career after banishing the funny Ash Blossom, because you know what? At this point, we have no reason not to. We go to battle phase, and we secure ourselves a top four in this week's Lupine Weekly by going three and one. What a ride! Whatever. We're, we're live in the Discord chat. You can't hear them, but they're there. They get to watch me do shit. Uh, so how it works, essentially, is that in ranked duels, which this is considered, uh, if I win the duel at all, I get two treasures. If I 2-0 somebody, I get three of them. I 2 0 three times, which is a grand total of nine, which is a lot of money. So I'm just gonna do this. Fuck. <laughs> okay, you know what? Th those are useful. Stack is good. Stack is a d6. Uh, fuck, I don't need those. Oh, shit! That's a good one, though. I'll take that. That's really good. Okay, that's fine. They can't hear you, Bosque, but you're there. Shout out to Bosque. There's another single... Co oh, okay, I don't need a star chip right now, but, like, sure. Sack is good. Pouch is good. Okay, you know what? That's not completely fucking terrible, I guess. So, we get a bunch of wild cards. That Ultra, I don't know what I will actually use it on right now, but there's only one of these in the entire deck, so that's valuable. We do have a bunch of money, though. Uh, okay, so wild cards aside, we'll put them to the side, and we'll do the we'll do the stack of money. So, again, heads is one, tails is two for these ones, and then we just roll the rest. And we're gonna click these a bunch, because th this shit just sucks. So we have to make sure it... There we go, that's a tails. 
I'm just gonna press it a bunch of times until we can see it, like, visually flipping in the shadow, because screw it, there we go, that's fine. Head, so that's three dollars. Now we do the same thing with this. No, I said spin that motherfucker. There we go. That's good. Eight. That's really good. I spin, damn it. There we go. Five. No, I said spin! Spin! Ugh. There you go. Now it's spinning. That's fine. Two. Okay, sure. So that is 15 bucks plus the three. That's 18. Plus the 10 additional dollars I get for finishing a top four, meaning 28 for the next episode. And that's the end of the episode. Yeah, I know this is a bit of a shorter one, but it doesn't really make sense for me to continue into the abyss when we've already done this many duels in a day. So I figured, hey, you know what, we'll just end the episode here and we'll keep going next week. During this week, though, we managed to have ourselves four duels, now ending on a total win-loss of 11 to 3 and a win percentage of 78%, which is definitely better than anything I could have dreamt of. We also have a huge cash stack going into next week, and I do think I know what I'd like to do with it. As for the wild card, though, I'm not really sure what I would like to spend that on, so I think I'm just going to hold on to them for the time being, because there could be an ultra rare in the future that we really need to get our hands on. But as of right now, there is not really any that I can think of that I would like to spend it to. Regardless though, if you did enjoy this episode, do remember to leave a like and comment down below. Click the subscribe button to motivate me to make more content. If you'd like your own supporter card into the Abyss deck, you can support me on Ko-Fi for as low as a coffee a month, essentially. And as always, do remember to stay safe out there.